Okay, so I like to talk about uh, my background. Uh, I was born and grown up in Hokkaido. It's a northern island of Japan, and then it's a nature field. So in my childhood days, I was just playing around in the forest. And then suddenly, when I get into the university, I moved to Tokyo. As you can see, it's a really messy place. <laughs> and so this contrast between the beautiful nature and the ugly city is my background. And for me, honestly, I love Tokyo very much because of this kind of a messiness. And then, after learning architecture, I found out some kind of the fundamental similarity between those two opposite things. Because if you are in the middle of a forest, you feel you are surrounded by beautiful greens, tiny leaves and branches, so it's quite like a comfortable human scale, protected feelings. But still, you can choose your own way, walking around in the forest. So those kind of protected, but at the same time open feelings, is like making the quality of values of the forest. And in Tokyo, appearance is completely different, but you are in the, if you are in the middle of Tokyo, you are surrounded by many small pieces, artificial pieces, but many, many small pieces, as you can see. So protected human feelings, but still you can just make your own way. So protected, human scale, but at the same time, really open field. It's almost the same as the forest. So structurally, appearance is completely different, but structurally, Tokyo and forest, nature and artifacts is almost the same, I, I thought. So that was the starting point to think about the, such a fundamental relationships between nature and artifacts as a basics of my architecture thinking. So that has been uh, continuing. And it is not only about nature, physical nature and the physical artifacts, but for example, inside and outside relationships, also relating those kind of the contrast. And then also the order of nature and then order of artifacts, also different but could have the similarities behind it, or simplistic complexity, and so on. So those kind of a fundamental question of architectures, everything is, for me, relating to this kind of a basic starting point of nature and architecture. Two opposite things are integrated in one place. And then the first project is the Serpentine Pavilion. It's already five years ago. And this is like the pavilions but it was a cafe and a multi-purpose spaces in the middle of the, the park. So we tried to create something beyond the normal architectural definitions, more like a melting into the, the nature, and at the same time still architecture-like things. And finally, we used the two centimeter uh, really thin steel pipes to create such a grid, and a 40 centimeter grid, and then sometimes 80 centimeter grids to create the whole space. And this is this has this was like the trial to reinvent everything from the point of view of like a reinventing relationships with nature and architecture inside and outside, transparencies and opaqueness, straightness and the softness and the natural order and the artifacts order. So all of those kind of the, the fundamental uh, contradictions we try to reintegrate by uh, such a simple way. And you can see everything is made by the straight line in a 90 degree, so it's super, super artificial. But at the same time, it's like a soft cloud. So the softness and the straightness, artificial order and the soft order, natural order, is uh, integrated and coexistent. And then the simplicity, it's, it's quite simple in a sense, but at the same time, it's really complex and diverse. So in that sense, the simplicity and the complexity uh, has been integrated. And also the transparencies and opaqueness and the translucencies, those kind of transitions, gradations, was realized. And it's not like a fixed uh, walls, it's not like a fixed windows. It's more like a relative experiential uh, transparencies or opaqueness. And if you move around, then the transparencies and opaqueness around you is always changing. So everything is fixed, made by the steel. It's really heavy, but the experience is quite dynamic and changing all the times. So it's like uh, the clouds around you is moving around like this. So in that sense, those kind of the physical materials, like a steel, could be transformed into uh, such an experimental, ephemeral uh, situations. And finally, again, 
those kind of other different scales was also quite important and interesting. Starting from the two centimeter tiny scales to the 40 centimeter furniture scales and then the architecture scales and then melting into the landscape scales. So those kind of transition from products, furniture, architecture, and the landscapes are, again, well integrated into the spaces. And those kind of transition of the scales are like the characteristics of the nature, I think. Yeah, if you see the forest, then you can see the harmony between the, such a varieties of the different scales. And of course, in architecture, that has been the, one of the main topics. But then, such kind of the straightforward, unexpected integration of different scales was, I think, not happened uh, before. Anyway, then I like to show suddenly really huge scales. It's well as the proposals in the Middle East. Then, 1.2 kilometer length of the site, the huge shopping center. And then it was like a Funny things to see such a so different situation, so different cultural backgrounds, so different climate conditions, so different scales and so different programs. Those kind of differences or newness always inspire us to think about or to uh, rethink about our previous concept and reach to some unexpected situations. And in this case, we started from making such a high a landmark, it's 100 meter high, to create the landmark in the middle of such a flat desert. But this tower is not just an object. It has an atrium inside, which bring the cool air from the bottom, and then the hot air is going up to create such a natural ventilation uh, as a whole structures. So then the whole space and the structures could make a reaction or conversation to the climate conditions. And then inside you have a huge atrium for the shopping programs. But the most exciting point of this project is, as you can see, these structural systems. It has the arch shapes and the circular shapes with the layers and layers and layers, and finally creating such as sunscreens against the strong sunlight of the Middle East. And then the glass line is set back, so all the structures it's not just supporting the buildings, but it could work as the sunshade to make the nice communication, the conversation with the climate conditions there. And of course, these arch shapes make the references to the local uh, cultural conditions. And of course, at that time, it was the first time for me to do something in the Middle East. So we imagine they must have money. So <laughs> creating the huge water pond in the middle of the the buildings to create such a crazy ideas of the shopping and so on. And as you can see, it's beautiful sunlight is coming down to, to it. And then finally, this was like the beautiful translucent uh, high-rise buildings. But uh, finally, after submitting 20 A0 panels, and yeah, we started to discuss about the date of the presentation. One day, we got uh, the emails to say all oh, the competition is cancelled because the king changed his mind. So it's, it's just suddenly gone, but still it is. We, I was happy because we got uh, such an extraordinary occasion to inspire, which inspires us to think about something so different. And we found out the structure system, it's... If you take out the, all the arches, then structure system is almost the same as serpentine. After finishing this project, we found out those kind of uh, unexpected connections beyond the different scales. Yeah, the repetition of the grids make the whole structure behind it, it's almost the same. But the scale is so different. Serpentine is like this, and then this one is like a 1.2 kilometers. But this occasion, different climate conditions, different scales, different programs, brought us from one point to the ideas, basic ideas of the serpentine to the far away, unexpectedly far away, to such a, a craziness of, of the project. So that is always like the excitement for architects, I believe, to be involved into the new uh, unexpected conditions which inspire you to go beyond the, you, you yourself. And of course, I am still, this was five years ago project, but I'm still showing 
this project every time I uh, do the lecture in abroad to expect some of the audience, some of you, could have money to, <laughs> to realize it, to make a nice collaboration together to create such a masterpiece. So uh, please just let me know secretly <laughs> after the lecture. And I'd like to go back to the tiny, tiny project in Japan. It's a public toilet project. It's like this. It's an open toilet. But actually, the public toilet is quite an interesting program for architects, I believe, because it's public, but once you are inside, it's really private. So then again, those opposite things, public, private, but how to integrate should be quite creative uh, things for architecture, uh, the problems. And then, the site is a really beautiful countryside, so it's nice to open your view, but of course, you have to protect the view from outside. Then, how to close it and how to open it, like the forest, how to make the protections, but at the same time, how to make an openness, has been really, really historical questions for architectures. When they started to make a wall and windows, then this problem or question happened. So in that sense, it's quite like a fundamental program to design the public toilet, I believe. And then, finally, we did like this. And it is like this. We have a glass box in the middle, and then we design also these oval walls, and which has a door. And once you enter to this garden, then you can lock the door. And once you lock the door, even if it is a quite open garden, it's like a private garden for you. That is why it's possible to have a, just a glass box in the middle as like a toilet. The wall is like uh, the 2.5 meter, so you are really, really protected. But at the same time, you can have the open view to the, to the surroundings. This is the plan. It's funny, really just a glass box and the wall and an entrance, but it works. And then finally, it's like this. We kept the existing trees, we kept the existing landscape to make it as natural as possible. And finally, this is a public uh, project, but after the completions, this gets uh, rather famous because of those kind of uh, craziness. And then many people like to come as, as like a, one of the touristic spots. And they rent a bus, big bus, one bus, two bus, three buses, come to here to make a long queue to take our photos sitting inside. <laughs> and it was nice, of course, it's okay. It's like a promotion of the city. But then, if you have like a 50 people, 100 people, some of you, some of them, of course, likes to do seriously just to the toilet. <laughs> and of course, they are expecting to go into the toilet. Okay, next stop is the toilet, so could I have to do that. But then, long queue, everybody's just taking a photos. They couldn't do that, and they made a they complain to the city, you should solve this problem. This should be the toilet, but this is not the toilet anymore. So how to do, how the city government do that? And the people in the government thought about it. And finally, they put such a temporary mobile toilet behind the walls. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, it's the first time in the long history of architecture, they put the toilet for the toilet. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> It's kind of a joke, but it's serious. And I like to say, even in such a small project, we can think about such a fundamental question of architecture, well, how to do with the public and private, how to open and close, to create rather crazy, funny, but the fundamental proposals for that. And this library is also, yeah, the, this toilet finally is dealing the problem with the boundaries rather blurring boundaries or impossible boundaries. And this library also has uh, trying to create such a layering of the boundaries almost infinitely. The whole library is made by the bookshelf, like this, spiral. And then finally the 6,000 square meter library is only made by the one continuous bookshelves. But the interesting point, they have many, many openings. So those kind of half-hidden but half-open situations continuing infinitely, creating or inspire you, your curiosity, what is happening there. 
And the library could be the place, of course, sometimes you just search the books and read books, but sometimes it's nice just walking around, meandering, to encounter unexpected books or something like that. So it's like a walking around in the forest. But of course, yeah, we have to make such a forest-like experiences by non-actual uh, physical greens, only using the artif artificial materials. And then this layering with many, many openings was the solutions for me. Then you can see how those kind of labyrinth-like feelings inspire you to create uh, the forest-like experiences. And then finally, yeah, you will see layering, layering, many, many layers, almost like an infinite. Sometimes sleeping, but it's okay. It's, yeah, she's representing how comfortable this space is. And so this is another types of the, the boundaries or uh, the layering of the spaces to create, again, the combination of like uh, the labyrinth-like spaces and the forest-like spaces are integrated together. I have two more projects, but I only have uh, three or uh, four minutes. I will speak fast. <laughs> uh, this is a housing in Montpellier, the Mediterranean city. Then we propose such a huge, huge balcony monsters to have, because their traditional lifestyle has been doing life on outside, no inside, outside. So I like to respect such a, their traditions and their climate conditions to bring it to the contemporary architectures. And finally, the solution was quite simple. The longest one is eight meter long and six meter wide, so it's almost like, like this podium. And the shape is a bit uh, uh, soft shape, and then old balconies all around. That is why this is interesting because housing block and the balcony has been really boring and the classical typology of housing. Everybody has been doing this. Then this is the same, but then this is so different. So really normal, but at the same time completely new. Because of the shape, because of the size of the balconies, and because it's all around, then finally normal things are tra transformed into completely new things. And this duality, one hand normal, boring, and on the other hand really new, are well integrated. So this is, that is the point I really love it. And then not only one balcony, but two, three balconies, sometimes double height, uh, Two level balconies uh, sticking out, connected by the outer staircases, and we test it, putting people, it's okay, and then <laughs> putting many balconies, and it's really huge. So it's not just a balcony, it's small, almost like a space, new architectural spaces are put it outside. And I'm now really looking forward to see how the life is coming out after the completion, after people come in, because yeah, Mediterranean people bring out the colorful parcels and the deck chairs and the messy every life stuff. Then that must be fantastic. All the life is covering the whole architecture. And finally, it's like a vertical life itself. That must be really, really fantastic. So I'm, this is now finishing in this autumn, September, October. So it's, it's quite exciting to, to, to see it. Okay, the last one. 1,000 tree in Paris. The concept is floating forest right above Paris. And of course, the city of Paris has a height limitation, and we propose the floating forest just right above it to make like a differentiations and a harmony or a contrast and a harmony because the city of Paris is really strong heritage and beauty, but every time they bring new things like the Eiffel Tower or like the Pompidou Center, so we try to do it in a different way, to make a contrast between the nature things and the, the historic city. The location is really special, but then it's like this, floating forest right uh, around the, the Paris. Then it is respecting the height limitation, the harmony of the city of Paris, but it's completely new things are floating above. And then from outside, you will see it as like a completely new, uh, strange floating forest but at the same time, it's really harmonized with the city of Paris. And then from on the rooftop, you will see the whole city of Paris because of the height limitations. And it's like this. It's, it's a bit crazy shape. 
And then the floating forest has the villages on top. And those kind of small, tiny houses is, again, different contrast and harmony with this existing city of Paris because they have a, just an apartment block. And such a small houses is so different. But once it is combined, it is like the reinforcing, reinforcing to each other. And this is the diagrams. Left one is like a typical housing block, the Mosmanian style in Paris. We open the bottom to provide the forest for the public, and then we transform the top one into the village and the forest floating above. And this is the, the rooftop view of Paris. It's quite, I love it, quite like a library and the human scales and like a village. So we transformed, respected, but then transformed it into the completely new things like this, and a view to the, to the Eiffel Tower. And then the city of Paris is like the city of landmark, but most of the landmark is made by the art artifacts. So we proposed the new landmark made by nature. So again, contrast and harmony, bringing opposite things together to make an integration with that. And then this is the view to the, to the public forest and floating forest above. Okay, so at the end, uh, I like to say three keywords or three messages. Be questioning. As I said, everything, even the opposite things, could be integrated if you re-question, re-question everything. So continuing re-question is like a, the starting point and the fundamentals of architecture design. Be optimistic. Of course, you have to be optimistic because every crazy thing could happen for architecture design, but you can make it. You can make the future. You have to make the future a beautiful future. And be honest for your future life. So thank you very much. Thank you.